Okay guys, welcome back to Hobson's Choice Harleys. We're working on this 81 wide glide. We got it all torn apart. I had to rebuild the top half of that transmission. The shifter plate that engages was actually the, the welds had busted and the springs were blown out in it. So we went ahead and got that all rebuilt and back together and uh, knock on wood, we're good to go. So we're just uh, reassembling everything. We got the inner primary in the other day. Got the safety wire on that one nut. We talked about that when I took it back. That's a stainless steel wire threaded through there and tied off. So if that nut backs off, basically it won't. And then everything else has got a nylon nut on it. Um, this one has to be a short head or a short bolt because your chain will hit it if not. So basically we're close. We're gonna put the starter in, hook up the wiring, put our fluids in it, put our primary back together. And we might get to go out and do a test ride on this this afternoon. It's been raining here all day, so I'm not real excited about going out and getting wet. But if I can get this guy's bike done and get out of here, I'll be all right with getting wet a little bit. So right now I'm trying to line up the starter. And I probably should have got this jack shaft in first, but that's all right. We'll get it one way or another. There we go. And I'm not even really trying to get it in gear. I'm just trying to get it held where I can get that first bolt started. There's one. Okay. Yeah, so if you see down inside there, that groove, those two have to connect to that groove. All right, top one and bottom one. So if I spin that, I can feel the starter spinning. So that's what we want. So that's in like Flynn. Okay, so we got three wires here. One from the battery. This feeds the battery into here. This feeds to your handlebar switch. This feeds to the starter. So that's your three main connections. And I don't like how loose that is. I wonder if I have. So that should be a 5 16. Hey, looky there. Take the slop out of that. Take the slop out of that. Wow. Okay. Old bikes, you're always finding something on them. So on here, I'm just trying to snug these down a little bit because you can really snap that real easy. So I don't want to do that if at all possible. And then we can come back to our battery, maybe. There we go. We're going to do this. And then we're going to do that. Okay. There we go. We did that right. We should be good. So it's about time for the clutch basket. We're going to turn that right there. And this is the one you never want to mess up with is this little drift key. So if you look at it, it's half moon shaped. So it'll rock up inside there. It's got to be pretty well flat. All right, so we got our sprockets together. I got my drift key in there. And then if you look, see the groove right there at the top, guys? That drift key's got to find that slot. And then while you're doing that, all of this has to find its spot too. Okay, let me get down on the floor where I can see what's up since I don't have my big lift available. Oh, all right, there we go. She is in like Flynn. Then we have to get in here and get our bolt. And this is one of these scorpion clutch packs. Well, unfortunately, there's no way to put a lock tab. Usually these have one of those washers where you bend the tab over. We can't get that on this one. And if you notice, I'm sure most of you guys that work on yours know, this is left-handed. So I'm turning it lefty-loosey is actually to tighten it. And so we're gonna have to turn on the compressor and let the air build up. And then we are close. And then as you can see, see my, my safety chain back there? That's why you have to have that so that if you had a big nut like this, it would rub against the chain and then that way it can never back out because it's tethered. All right, so we got to put the compensator on. We got to lock this down, put the clutch plates. But in order to do all that, we need air. The tough part about this Scorpion clutch is that little notch that I showed you that it lines up is not. You can't see it from the front. So most of your stock ones, that groove that that drift key goes into comes all the way through the clutch basket. And unfortunately on this one, it does not. There we go, compensator went in. I think we got it that time. Reverse threads. So we're gonna try our little one first. We're gonna put the big bad boy on here. So that's our compensator sprocket set up like so. We got that loaded on there. So 
I always hand screw these until that shoulder lines everything up before I hit them with the air. And I do have a little bit of blue Loctite in there. I didn't go red because I don't like the red on stuff that comes apart or is supposed to come apart. There we go. So we're on to putting our clutch back together. So basically steel fiber. I've had all of these wrapped up and out of dust range. Yes, it's not a huge deal because those fibers do wear out. That's why you isolate your primary. It used to be all the old Harleys. I forget what year, but they used to run the engine oil through this primary and back to the engine. Well, all your clutch shavings and fibers were then getting run through your whole motor. So now most of everything is run like this. You've got a separate oil for your primary, a separate oil for your engine, and a separate oil for your transmission, which is a much better setup. And these aftermarket, the nicer ones like this, clutch systems are really nice because your shovel heads and pan heads were either five or seven alternating plates. This thing's got like 20. So yeah, your clutch plates are a lot thinner and a lot less on there, but you got double the amount of them. So the amount of surface on these is really impressive. So this is from Barnett. It's a Barnett Scorpion and it's a high dollar setup. So I'm just going to go about yay far until I get all of them going so that that plate goes on smooth or straight. Okay, so we're just going to snug that and we're going to snug that. Okay, so that not spinning means we're trying to turn the motor. That's what we want. That center hub on this system is all one piece. On most of your standard shovel head stuff, your hub is two piece. So you can set your hub first and the drift key notch in the hub comes all the way through. So you can visually see it from this side. On this Barnett system, it is not visible behind the pressure plate. So what I ended up doing is just taking a Sharpie and marking the drift key on the transmission shaft and then the drift key on the hub itself where I could line up those marks because twice I put it together and spit the drift key and wasn't in there all the way. So I think we got her this time. Go ahead. Okay, she's moving. Split the difference. Okay, so she's pretty close. Finally got her back together. We are going to put the outer primary on there. We're not gonna fill this with oil yet. We're gonna put the primary on. We're gonna put fluids in here and then fire her up and see. We'll still have to do a final adjustment on everything, uh, but we're real close. So we were back and forth uh, getting the adjustment on the clutch. The little ball bearing on the end of the clutch rod over there was not in the groove all the way. So I couldn't get it to engage. But now if you look, see how we're pulling out that little less than a quarter of an inch, that is our clutch is working. Um, the way I tested that is I went over there and I kickstarted it and it does engage the motor. Um, and if you pull in the neutral or your clutch while you're kicking it, you're back in neutral. We've also spun the wheel in neutral and in gear. And so we're really close. It should be plug and play at this point. So we're going to go ahead and put our thrust washers up there. So typically in the book, it'll call for one thrust washer. This one has three and I'm not going to mess with it because that's the way it came apart. I've got an outer primary for shovel head that is actually cut. I cut it in half right here so that I can put it on there and measure the difference here because these aftermarket ones are notorious for having different depths to here. So the stock ones are almost flush with the face here. See, that one's in there psh, half inch. So you've got to make sure you need a little play. This goes on this shaft, and this shaft has to spin in that bearing, but it's got to be pretty solid. These gears engage these gears is what starts it electrically. But if this shaft has got too much play in it, you get a world of hurt. So we're going to go with what was on there when we got the machine, because supposedly it was close. Oh, it's not going on for a reason. The reason is because I didn't put the gasket. <laughs> we're going to put one bolt here and then we're going to try and get one bolt up here somewhere. Also, your stock primary had this little notch that you see here. It was actually a tab that came through that hole. It was an alignment tab to get this thing lined up. Your aftermarket stuff doesn't have those tabs, so... Sometimes getting this stuff lined up is kind of a 
pain in the butt. But not today. Look at that. I even grabbed the right Allen key right off the bat. So I like to get this top one more or less snug. And then I'll go around and that little alignment key I told you that was in there that's missing helped make sure that jack shaft was perfectly lined up. And since they're aftermarket and don't have that, it makes it a little more trying. You just got to make sure everything goes smooth. Don't beat and force. If you got a beat and force on something, chances are you got something out of alignment. So like I say, I like to go through here and just get all of these started. Like that one's not starting. So I'm going to have to loosen that one a little bit. Don't like that one either. Okay, fine. We'll come down here. So we got a little bit of oil. There was just a little bit of oil left in this primary. I had it upside down over here so it wouldn't get full of dirt and dust. And we're going to fill it full of oil anyway. It looks like a Harley again. Again, something's not quite right. We're going to loosen that one. Put this one in there. Yeah, she don't want to line up. And we'll loosen everybody a little bit. This one didn't want to grab. Okay, so that one grabbed. Which other two were fighting us? This one. Okay, it grabbed. We can't be off by too far. All right, there we go. That one grabbed. Should just be the one more over here. So just like anything, you kind of go in a staggered pattern. You don't want to start at one bolt and go in a circle because then you'll just crush that gasket on one side and it'll leak on the other side. I like to kind of go round robin and hit them all a little at a time and then come back and snug everything. And these all have washers, which is good. And the worst thing you can do on one of these primaries is crank on those bolts. It doesn't take much to throw them out of true. And then the flip side of that is it don't take much for them to leak. So kind of a fine line between the two. Oh, I didn't even get that one snugged. There we go. Primary back together. So what we'll have to do is pour some fluid in this one, but we're not gonna take that out yet. We're going to hook the oil lines on the other side of this, put a couple quarts of oil in it, and then fire it up, see what happens. Let's see, what else did I need to do? i got to hook the other half of the battery up. If I can find my screwdriver, of course. I went with the longer screw, and I should have went with the shorter screw. Always something. So just for giggles. Okay, so Tranny's got fluid. I'm going to put the oil lines back on here. Might be easier said than done. We're back together, and for whatever reason, our starter is just clunking. It's not engaging. This thing's a wiring nightmare. I don't know if the relay's gone bad or what. So we're going to open the door. We're going to let it off the lift. I'm going to roll it out there and see. Maybe it'll kick. She's back on her wheels. That's a good thing. Get that lift out from under her. Huh, she don't want to fire. All right, guys, good morning. Welcome to Hobson's Choice Harleys. You can see in the background, we've got that 1980 FX Wide Glide up and running uh just a kind of a recap it was brought to me with the transmission seized was pretty sure we we're gonna have to do a full rebuild on the transmission actually got really lucky we tore it apart the top half of the rotary top transmission had spun the cam gear off the shaft so i was able to rebuild just the top half of the transmission uh put new springs in it put bushings in the linkage had to weld the cam plate back on the following shaft up in the top of the the uh, transmission and other than that it was pretty good the lower case or the gearbox itself was in good shape all the gears were clean there was no metal shavings no chipped teeth uh, so just cleaned everything up rebuilt the top end put new seals and gaskets and uh, that was the easy part once we got that together electronically we had fits with the stator was burnt out in it the cables from the battery to the solenoid were fried so i had to put new cables there the starter on here right now is a RevTech starter. It's a piece of junk from brand new, and I don't even know how old it is. So it works sometimes. It works when it chooses to. I had to kick it this morning. Yesterday, I hit the button five times. She fired every time. Uh, so she's running good. I've been through the uh, gears a couple times around the block. I'm going to ride it a little more, 
and then we're going to get this one back to the customer and start on with the next project. I had to get something out of my stash because I'm going to go ride this around. And yesterday, sitting on the frame was no comfort at all. So I think this one should fit. Okay, back down the road. Transmission's working like it should. All right, you guys made it to the end. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please kickstart that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, comment what you guys think. Let me know if you have any suggestions for video ideas or topics you guys want covered and I'll do my best to include those in my next projects. You guys can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out the Beacons link in the description below. See you next time.